Hey, what's up, people? Um, glad we got uh, number 27 back, man. J-Rock, curse. I felt like he was going to get away from us for a second. I um, feel like he's been slightly disrespected, but I do understand the need to not pay everybody top dollar, you know? It doesn't mean he doesn't deserve top dollar, but I'm glad we got him for We got him for two-year deal worth 10 mil, 5K, 5 mil a year. I mean... He's worth eight easily uh, when you look at guys like Buda Baker and what they're making versus what he's making. Um, I will say that Buda Baker has been a lineal pro bowler and a playmaker longer than J-Rock has been due to the fact that he was bouncing around. So some of that plays into it too. Um, I think over the next two years, the reason he probably took a short deal is because if he's able to continue uh, – to trend the way he has been because he 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 outdid Buda Baker this year in stats shout out to Law Nation for pointing that out too um but he outdid him statistically uh, in every category this year except for interceptions and even interceptions I think I give him four interceptions even though he only officially got uh two but he had one against the Chargers I think was real and he had a fumble recovery a forced fumble fumble recovery against the Raiders that I think was real uh, that they didn't give him. So I give him those two extra turnovers. That's just me. Uh, but outside of that, his impact had very little to do with just stats. You know, you're a green dot guy. We talk about the green dot, green dot, green dot, green dot. We say that shit all the time. Like everybody, you know, it's like a buzzword now. Green dot, you know, like get your green dot card. I should get a green dot card sponsorship and, and shit. Like go to Rite Aid and get you guys a green dot card. Make sure, you know, you send us some money off for some yoke down to Mexico. Use green dot. You know what I'm saying? You buying some green, use green dot. You feel me? Uh, anyway, back to the... Damn, this lady got her baby right in the fucking street. Like, what's up with you? Get your baby out the street. The fuck is you doing? Stupid. She got him. Anyway, it's Philly, man. Philly crazy. <laughs> Philly crazy. You can't even make this shit up, dog. Philly crazy. Motherfucker got a baby in the street with a back turned to the little motherfucker. I'm like, yo, get this little nigga out of the street. Yeah, he, he, he Chinese or Puerto Rican. I can't really tell. They kind of over there. Anyway, I know that's a far. Not saying Chinese people look like Puerto Rican. I'm just saying they just tan people. But um, back to J Rock Curse um, and his money. I don't remember what I was saying before that. I just do know that. Oh, his impact as far as being a green dot guy and playing linebacker. And safety for us. Now, I remember too, because the reason I wasn't going to be so pissed off about him leaving if he did leave, because I do think Jabril Cox, no disrespect to J Rock, I think on the coverage end, Jabril Cox may be just as good or better. Man to man, anyway. As far as the cerebral end of it, getting guys lined up, and then the emotional impact of J Rock is where I value him. His tackling ability, is ridiculous he's one of our best tacklers and i don't mean the hardest hitter even though he does hit pretty hard to me it's the fact that he gets you down if he touches you you go to the ground um love that about him uh and he's tenacious in regards to the energy the infectiousness of the energy that he gives off that is what the most important factor in my opinion would be like if they gave me that paper that they gave all the cowboys players to write about what they need from their counterparts uh, i would say I'm pretty sure emotional uh, infusion would be one of the main things that they touch on, um, that they touch on when it comes to um, J-Rock Curse. So, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, I think bringing him back means a lot there. Uh, defensively, I didn't like some of the things we were doing, obviously the Randy Gregory thing um, that transpired, how I feel about it. People try to argue me down, you know, Randy just didn't understand. Like, we always got to be dumb. It never could be Jerry Jones is wrong. Steven is wrong. These niggas just got to be dumb. Y'all dumb. Like, all y'all dumb. You know what I'm saying? It could never be anything wrong with the Joneses, even though we all know there's something wrong with the Joneses, man. And that's crazy to me. Because they're like, yeah, he just didn't understand what the count. You think he that pissed off because he didn't understand a one-liner in the contract? Like, uh, the way it looks to me is... This, is, this isn't Randy's video, but still, the way it looks to me is that 
He brought you a deal because he wanted to stay here. He brought you the deal that Denver gave him. He said, here you go. Match this for me. Word for word. So their job was to match it for him. Word for word, which they did not do. When they got the contract, what they did was they agreed on the contract and then added the clause. Had the clause been there when they agreed, I don't think he would have done that, right? Now, would I have kicked Jerry after I left like Randy did? Who knows? I'm not them. You know, we hear from Jerry and those guys that Randy and Jerry had a great relationship, uh, you know, and all that other shit. That's from Jerry's mouth. But actions speak louder than those words ever could. So um, I think that the players are starting to understand just like we are what is really happening based off the trends that you see set before you in the Cowboy organization. I'm still a Cowboys fan. I'm not one of these guys who say, oh, I'm about to root for, you know, I root for all these players. I like them. I like Randy Gregory. Go win some Super Bowls, bro. Um, cool. Same thing. Go win some Super Bowls, bro. Feel me? But i um, still a Cowboy fan. So it's not changing that. It's just, let's be real. Like I can't not keep it 100 when it comes to what I see. Uh, so if that means, and I see a lot of you who have unfollowed me because of that, I don't, I really don't care no more when it comes to that, bro. Like I'm not in prison here. I'm going to say what I see and say how I feel. And you guys should either, you can learn to disagree with me. You know, people disagree by saying, saying, uh, we're going to unfollow. I don't give a shit. Get out of here. Like you could do it now. You know, I don't, uh, I used to. Cause, so I would change what I'm saying based off of what I think the impact of what I'm saying will be. But I'm not saying nothing but the truth. And you can't take that and don't come talk. Don't, you don't want to watch this channel. You don't. I might be wrong sometimes. That's cool. I might be a little provocative. That's just me. But um, I'm going to tell you what I truly think. I'm not going to bullshit you. And that's true. Um, so anyway, back to it. That's how I felt about that situation. And I think players are starting to look at the Cowboys organization in that light. Um, hopefully we win something this year where we can kind of quell some of the frustration of the fans. But uh, 26 years now, 25, 26 years, it's been kind of long since we've gotten what we wanted. Um, but shout out to J-Rock for, for sticking with us uh, through it. And uh, let's keep building a plane while it's flying, so to speak. Um, like I said, the impact that he brings, like I said, more than physical. It's more than just his ability to cover because I think we had that covered. I respect the guys that we have here behind him, Jabril Cox being one of them. Um, but I think his emotional impact and the fact that he gets guys lined up is what's most important about bringing him back to this defense, the way he, the way he plays the game. He can pass rush like his uncle. Not like his uncle, but he's a long guy that can pass rush. Uh, shout out to the freak, uh, Javon Curse, his uncle. Um, but he can pass rush. He can cover. He plays pretty damn good at linebacker. And um, he's he's okay when he's off the ball safety too. So, um, And he plays some nickel for us. So, you know, that's a very versatile guy that I think gives us the ability to match up very well against anyone. Uh, you couple that with Micah Parsons, we're going into the draft needing maybe a linebacker. I know they re-signed. I should make a video about that one because that would be funny. They re-signed my man LVE, man. I liked LVE for his rookie year. I, I defended him his rookie year. So for those who think that i just been an LVE hater, you know that ain't true if you've been following me. Um, his rookie year, everybody was mad that we didn't go get uh, Evans or we didn't jump down for Derwin James or some shit like that. It might have been a receiver or something they wanted. But... I say, hey, man, you know, if he can learn not to tackle with his head down and doesn't re-injure that neck, he could be pretty damn good. That happened the first year. After that, it was a wrap. So I gave him his credit in his rookie year. Since then, he hasn't been what I would want in a linebacker. Now, here's why. If he was six foot, 220, undersized, Ray Lewis type guy, who plays, I wouldn't even take it, take that. But if he was Neil playing like that, because he's not a safe, he's not really a linebacker, okay. If he was J. Ryan Curse playing like that, because he's not really a linebacker, okay. 
But when you're bigger than Randy Gregory, meaning you're six foot five, 260 to 270 pounds, and you run a four, 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 five, I think you ran a four, six. I'm gonna need you to bring the load, bruh. You know, you look like a Bond villain. I wanna get some Dolph Lundgren, if he dies, he dies type of play out of LVE. Play balls to the wall. And we're still not gonna get that. We're not gonna get that this year because he's on another one year deal. And he's gonna want a contract. So he's not gonna play with reckless abandonment because he's not secure yet. He hasn't gotten big money yet. Um, if he does get big money somewhere, you know, if he can land a Pro Bowl or. Told you to get the real over here. But if he can land a Pro Bowl or we win something big or he can put some good stats up on film, he can get some good money and then he can go somewhere and actually play recklessly again. Uh, his rookie year, he was able to do that. He got hurt and he said, hey, got to, got to kind of pack it in. Last year, he packed it in until uh, Gallimore came back. And we're gonna get more of that. But I think he's a placeholder right now so that we don't enter the draft sort of shopping with our, with our stomachs empty, you know, shopping while you're hungry, so to speak. I don't like doing that. So if that's the reasoning behind signing them, I get it. But I don't want LV starting um, at this point. I don't, I really don't. I think if Cox is healthy, I'd like to see what he can do. Shit, I, I, I'd like to see what Gifford can do, uh, to be quite honest, um, over LVE. Personally speaking, I don't think the signing was necessary, but he has started in this system. So there you go. All right, that's how I feel about it. But let me let me get out of here. I, I'll throw another one up in a second, but y'all already know what it is, man. Um, can't make none of this shit up. Uh, but I'm loving what, what I'm doing still, man. I got to start making videos like I need money, so I got to start making more videos because I don't make enough of them. I make them like it's a hobby. And I don't treat it like a business. And that's just honest. So I got to stop doing that. Um, I'm probably doing a little bit too much, which is true. This is now becoming my therapy session. I'm probably doing too much. I'm running around doing a lot of shit, man. But it's all good things. I'm not like running the streets doing crazy shit. So, you know, progress. Baby steps, baby. You know what I mean? Love y'all. I'm out.